Or should people become more dangerous? Oh, becoming more articulate is definitely, I would say, that's the primary array of weapons. So, I mean, physical prowess is something, and, and it's not nothing, that physical confidence that comes along with that as well. But the same thing replicated at the level of the ability to communicate and to think, and that's a way broader field of, of battle and opportunity. So this is one thing that isn't taught well, especially to boys. Um, it's more important to teach it to boys, I would say, because they're more uh, skeptical of such, of the educational enterprise in general, generally speaking, partly because they're less obedient, partly because they're less agreeable. That's particularly true for disagreeable boys. And agreeable boys get higher grades, independent of their IQ and their, and their academic achievement, because they're easier to deal with. So, what do you tell disagreeable boys? There's nothing that makes you more formidable than verbal competence, than being able to articulate, be able to think, to marshal your arguments, right? It's a battlefield metaphor. Get everything in order. Get all your information straight to, to marshal your forces and so i mean that's part of the reason that rap artists are so popular especially among disaffected young men black and white alike because they're unbelievably articulate you know, they have this incredible verbal prowess it's unbelievably attractive you know and it's associated with genuine artistic and redemptive activity often focusing on something that's approximately the voice of the underclass, let's say, but a powerful voice, right? And it's interesting to see how many young white guys identify with that. Was it Aldous Huxley that wrote Doors of Perception? Yeah. Yeah, so this is kind of an equivalent of that, right? That you have a experience which many people struggle to articulate. You take the best of us, the one that has the most precise, most articulate mm -hmm. erudite language, mm -hmm. You drop them in and you say, okay, show us what you've learned. Mm -hmm. This is the equivalent, but for just a different community, a different sort of life, that maybe you don't have the ability to describe what it feels like to live on a council estate in Manchester or in you know, the, one of the neighborhoods of Brooklyn or whatever it might be. And then this person can, mm -hmm. and it feels like it's your voice. Yeah, well, you still, if you're a young man, you still feel alienated from your place as rightful heir of the proper kingdom. I mean, that's an existential truism for everyone for every particularly for every young man because he is an outsider in many ways he's young and juvenile and not very highly valued and and then is is in some sense hurt by the inadequacies of the current king the current culture and and is easily turned against it because of that and that's the machinations of the evil uncle that's the king arthur story that's the story of horus Hor horus and osiris it's an ancient ancient story it's the story of Sauron, and um, it's there all the time. And you see in that, in rap music, in hip hop, the, the, all of that alienation being given an articulated voice in, in an artistic sense. And that's a good example of the power of verbal facility. And that's the route to, let's say, marketing education to young men. It's like, you want to you wanna take your rightful place in the kingdom? It's like, get your tongue straight man get it under control in the highest possible sense we went to a comedy club tammy and i and in uh new york the comedy cellar it's a great comedy club and the last comic was an english guy and uh he was uh not particularly physically prepossessing and he he made a lot of jokes about that and it was quite funny and then he divided the audience into five sections and he asked each section to toss up a topic, just to yell out a topic. And they were like random topics like the Kennedy assassination and electric lighting before 1890. Those were two of the topics. And the other three were just as diverse. And then he put on some beats and he did a, about an eight minute rap with every verse rhymed. And he tied the whole thing together at the end and ended at the end of the music, all spontaneously. It was unbelievable. And that's Logos, man. That's the redemptive power of the Logos right there, the magic word, the sacred word. It's just manifesting itself on stage. It's something very that, impressive. Something about that that does feel dangerous as well. In, not in a 
I need to be concerned and this should be contaminated and walled off, but in a way that you think that person has so much competence mm -hmm. that it it's flowing out of them. Mm -hmm. And you almost feel competent by being around them. Mm -hmm. so but you certainly feel competent by appreciating it. Yep. Right? Because it speaks to the part of you that is capable of appreciating such things. You think, wow, that's really something. That's really, that's an amazing display. That's an amazing thing to see. Amazing, right? A very interesting word, amazing. Yeah. You're, you're trapped and you're trapped by the charisma of that. And that charisma, that's not nothing. That's, that's a signal of something redemptive occurring. That, that accounts for virtually all of the attraction of hip hop and rap. It's the articulate, articulated voice of the struggling, but worthy underclass. I suppose that's a good way of putting it. But those who are alienated from their rightful place, and so that verbal prowess is one of the ways they struggle up towards the light. You know? And, and that, that's a good example of that, uh, of having that danger under control, because it's a dark genre in many ways, right? It's, it's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a real undercurrent, an air of violence that surrounds that and its culture, like the punk movement in the, in, in, in the UK back in the late 70s, same, same sort of thing, but that that capacity to express that in a poetic manner, in a compelling manner. Sid, or, uh, Johnny Rotten was great at that. It was so intense. It, he worked with PIL afterwards, Public, Im Public Image Limited, is that it? Public Image? I think so. He has a song called Rise, which I used to show my, my clients all the time when I was starting uh, uh, assertiveness training with them. I'd put on Johnny Rotten's Rise, and. The line in there is anger is an energy and he's got these unbelievably intense eyes. And anger is an energy. You bet. And John Lydon, man, he could channel that like almost no one I've ever seen. He'd get that anger built up inside him and then it was completely under control and he expressed it in his music and it's absolutely captivating. Unbelievably charismatic and I really liked his music, that raw anger in the music that but it was it was in the bloody music, wasn't it? it wasn't some random riot, you know? He transmuted that into something, you know, you can argue about the poetic merits of, um, of punk rock, although I don't think you should. I mean, uh, I did it my way, Sid Vicious's version of I did it my way. My God, that's a work of genius, that. It's so, it's so brilliantly satirical. What someone's doing is they're refining it, they're distilling it yeah. down, and then they're directing it. So I went to a, a powerlifting competition a couple of years ago. There was this one guy there lifting, he holds a bunch of records in the squat. And he's a, a normal working class guy from a normal working class town on the outskirts of Newcastle. And watching that man warm up is something else. He's got a, a sacred playlist. Mm -hmm. He never listens to the songs apart from when he's about to step on to the lifting platform. Mm -hmm. He's got these headphones on and he's just walking up and down in the same way that you'd see a bull mm -hmm. ready, ready to go out, ready to go and chase something. And he steps out on stage and the hairs stand up on the back of mm -hmm. your neck. You're watching this guy channel Rage. fury. That's the god of war. That's Mars. Yeah, he's in touch with that. Mm. Unbelievable. And words, man. You go to war with words. And you think that's what young men should be taught. <laughs>